an operative. Hey everybody, welcome to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. I am your host, Smooth Operative, and today we have another fantastic speedrun for you during Disability Awareness Month, Shin Megami Tensei 2 with Electra 13X7777. But before we get into the run, I just want to remind everyone that Games Done Quick is still accepting submissions for Disability Month. So if you do speedrun with a disability and would like to submit, just type exclamation mark disability month in chat to access that submission form. Also, AGDQ 2020 registration is surprisingly still open. Uh, the last I checked, there were 50 spots available. So if you would like to attend AGDQ 2020, make sure you head over to gamestonequick.com and create a profile to register for that event. And the full game schedule for HDQ will be out on October 16th, so keep an eye out for that. Now then, let's get into the run you're all here to see, Shin Megami Tensei 2. Electra, take it away. Hey guys, uh, we're about to get into Shin Megami Tensei 2, the uh, second Shin Megami Tensei game, if it wasn't readily apparent. Uh, I'm going to be joined by Mini Omega King, who's going to be uh, on co-commentary. Uh, Minnie's a legend, good man. And uh, first thing, we're gonna start with a. Uh, this is JRTA, by the way. So we're gonna start time uh, on a console reset, and I'm going to be doing a frame perfect input to manipulate RNG for about the first 15 minutes of the run. Um, I feel like that's everything I need to explain. Should we probably get into the run now? Yeah, whenever you're ready. All right, um, I guess on go. All right. Three, two, one, go. Woo! <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. All right, we might have gotten it. Let's see. So we find out if he hits the frame once he gets into the virtual battle, or... Takes about 40, 50 ish seconds before we know. And you can tell based on what the first encounter is. Yeah, so I gotta set some settings first, which also changes RNG. Got it. So this is the encounter that he wants, and from here on, from this point until um, the first boss, uh, everything's going to be manipulated, so we know how each of these battles are going to go down. Yeah, so this is manipulated perfectly so that I level up right at the last enemy we fight here. Which saves time. Now I'm going to put a point into speed here. Speed's the most important stat in this game. Uh, uh, strength is the second most important stat. Speed basically, uh, unlike a lot of Megami Tensei games, this game uh, preceded the press turn system. Uh, and uh, turns in battle and how many hits you do per turn is decided by your speed and your uh, weapon, obviously. Uh, some certain weapons can uh, hit more times uh, regardless of speed. So the first few uh, parts here, we have to name our characters. If you don't name uh, the characters, it puts po points towards Law, and Law just so happens to be the fastest ending in this game. So now we're going into the virtual battle right here. We're going to go here twice. First time is to meet uh, our boy Steven and uh, get the demon summoning program. And then the second time is to just get some extra levels before we head off to the Coliseum. Second time also, uh, you name another character. 
at the beginning. Can I just say this music is really awesome? Oh yeah, this game has a great soundtrack. <laughs> All most Atlas games have great soundtracks. SMT2 probably has my uh, favorite uh, SMT soundtrack. It's really good. Got another Mebius here. We're going to be fighting uh, Mebius encounters until we level up. in the speed. We're at the gym right now. That's where we're at. Yeah, we're training. We're uh, getting levels. We're getting a nice workout in. One more point in the speed here. And now we're going to leave the virtual battler. That's the last time we're uh, going to be there. Now, since we're uh, poor, because uh, we just uh, spent a bunch of money on training at the gym, we got to go talk to our uh, personal trainer here. He's going to give us some more money. Then we're going to go name our last character. Now we're going outside of Valhalla to uh, fight some demons and recruit some uh, demons. Some of the movement here is pretty tight uh, to stay on the minute. All right, we're gonna talk here. Recruit this high pixie. gonna fight this uh, poltergeist. Now this next encounter has to be on uh, 5 eighths moon. We're gonna talk, second option, no, and then yes to everything else. And that'll recruit knocker. It'll also make us encounter a Chan Chan, which we're gonna fight.
So what's happening currently lore wise? Are you like recruiting everyone for your team and trying to like make sure you get enough levels so that you can move to like different areas of the game, I am guessing? Yeah, um, this is kind of like the beginning of the game is um, just like training pretty much. Training for your big adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're gonna talk. No. We're training for the Valhalla blood sports. Yeah. So we're oh, in like okay. a post-apocalyptic world here. That would explain right, uh, some up. of the enemies here. <laughs> and escape. We're going to level up off of this fight. And put another point into speed. We got one more encounter. This next section, I have to be really uh, like tight on the uh, moon phase. I need to go down to where I fight the next encounter at five eighths, so I can encounter it at a full moon. There we go. Yeah, speed is important because it lets you um, attack multiple times when you actually do use a physical attack. Mm -hmm. Now I have to enter the Colosseum at 6 8 moon. Alright. So that last encounter uh, determines whether I get the manipulation for the Colosseum here. So depending on what encounter I get here, I'll know. Uh, if I don't get in a certain encounter, I know I got the manipulation. If I'm remembering correctly, in SMT1, speed is also uh, the most important stat, because yep. it should affect the same thing. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we're and good. an if, also. All right, cool. That's the right encounter. So now we're just getting a bunch of uh, equipment here. Another thing about the manipulation, other than uh, encounters, it also manipulates drops uh, for the item changing section later in the run, uh, which we'll see right after this. I'm gonna go equip some stuff now. these gawkies here and this this is the first instance of us putting a uh, point into strength Oops. 
strength in this game actually upgrades um, attack, like damage, as well as uh, HP, which yeah. makes uh, vitality useless in this game. <laughs> There's no point in putting points in that. Vitality isn't completely useless. It does uh, give you more defense defense points, but compared to armor, uh, uh, what armor uh, affects uh, defense, it's like uh, negligible in comparison. You only get like a point per uh, skill uh, per point invested into uh, vitality. Alright, Red Bear is uh, really hard. I'm totally still touching my controller while I'm doing this. That was a really good fight. This has been a good section. This, this run's not bad. So now I got a little bit of a cutscene here. Uh, I guess I can explain the next section, which is going to be item changing. First, we gotta go fuse a Hecate, which Hecate is like the most important demon in this run. Uh, it makes it possible to beat the game at the final boss. We'll get to that way later, though. Yeah, but first we'll we gotta later. fuse Hiroko here. Uh, Hiroko is the main uh, heroine of the game. She'll be like in our party for the most most of the game there will be a point where she leaves but uh we'll get her back like and i think like 20 or 30 minutes after that how many party members can you have active at one time uh there's only two human party members but you can have four demons oh, okay. uh, Although in this run, uh, you will not be seeing four demons. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm unequipping the uh, uh, main human characters uh, for the next section uh, to overflow the bag. You have to move uh, carefully there so you don't get an encounter because since you've unequipped everything, you're really weak. Um, and if you were to get in, like any encounter, you would just get like destroyed. All right, so now we're gonna go fuse Hecate. Oops. There we go. And there's Hackett. Hecate comes with two really cool skills, uh, one being Traport, which brings, you, which warps you back to the last place, you, the last terminal you saved at, which is really useful, and uh, Trias, which is a completely broken skill, and we'll see that in a bit after this next section. Gonna walk up here till two eighths and then go down, which should get me to half moon by the time I get to the terminal. There we go. I'm gonna save here.
We're gonna enter Valhalla at half moon here. And we're gonna go to the junks to uh, buy a bunch of items and then do some item swapping. I'm gonna probably be very quiet for this. This is like the hardest part of the run. Now we're gonna summon Hecate. And use Trifort. And save and reset. So we're gonna be doing a lot of item swapping here. Um, I'll explain this once I'm done. This this part's kind of tough. Keep on going.
All right, that's the last one for the time being. We're gonna use Triast here to warp back to Valhalla. Would you say that some of the menuing is harder because uh, it's in, some of it, most of it's in Japanese, or? I mean, I can read it, but uh, yeah, uh, it's just some things are uh, about it are just kind of tough. It's it's a lot of uh, precise menuing. If you screw it up, you have to reset on like a, oh, yeah. a normal run. Uh, now we're gonna sell a bunch of stuff. Um, and as you can see, I have way more than I'm supposed to of a lot of items. I'm selling S of that one. Uh, and I'm about to sell uh, Key, uh, the character Key. Because the game can't uh, store, like, uh, the actual um, values of uh, how many we have. It's supposed to be F. Uh, T. Um, it's going to just go to the next location, which happens to be the language tables. And there we go. That's the right amount. Use Triport, or we're gonna save and reset. Now, if this doesn't work and I get the wrong item on the first time, uh, on the first uh, uh, swap, I'm going to load a safety save because I got one. That's wrong. I have to load the safety save. Oh well. It happens. Um, the position of that uh, item there matters. One. There we go. So it should be two, uh, one down from the top, and that's the right item. All right. Yep. Proper menu. And now we're gonna go equip everyone. So like you can see these items are really good. Um, now uh, we're gonna go one, two, there we go. And we're gonna use a bunch of incenses here. Where is So the reason why I put Hiroko up front is so that I can just use all these instances we just uh, uh, put in our bag uh, really quickly. I can just hold Turbo A. I use uh, like 34 of these. Basically getting her magic way up. This one is intelligence. Oh, right, intelligence. She ain't no call. Alright. 
right, now we're gonna do magic. Check my stats. Sure, okay. I got 10 more. Uh. Now I'm going to use a 10 fume basically like a repel and we're gonna go buy some stuff from the messia here all right cool and now that's that was the hardest part of the game Triest here. Now we're gonna see why Triest is the most broken skill in this game, or it's, uh, you know, poorly programmed. I wouldn't say it's the most broken skill, but uh, we're gonna go to the disco here, uh, where everyone's dancing furiously. This is like what everyone remembers from SMT2. We're not here to dance though, we're here to do a wrong warp to get to the last area of the game. Mapper, and now we're going to use Triest. And now we're in the last area of the game. It may look like we're still in uh, the disco, but we're really in Makai. Yeah, for some reason it keeps the same map as disco, even though it, we're in a totally other area. Yeah, it doesn't have... Uh, from my understanding of the code, it you know it won't be able. It doesn't have a uh, flag to reload textures, so it's not going to. We're gonna heal at the healing spring here. I like the Persona One reference in the chat there. All right, we're gonna talk to Steven, and then we're gonna go save, because. Uh, this next boss is one of the four bosses that can actually kill you. Depending on uh, whether you get an encounter beforehand. Also, we need to put the location of where we need to report to later. And the area still has the song from Disco, which is pretty good. Oh, yeah. And it's going to stay that way for a while, too. All right, this is actually an okay encounter. I'd rather have three, but... Yeah, I hope, I hope I get another encounter before the boss here. But we'll see. So the reason we, uh, other than for the RNG uh, portion, the reason why after that we uh, wanted to pay attention to the moon cycles is so that we could uh, come right here at new moon, which is when you need to fight Hecate. Also, this encounter is pretty good. All right, so. Roko learns a ton of spells here. Nice. 
All right, so here's Hecate, second boss in the game. Well, kinda auto. Yeah, yeah. Oh, second boss. Uh, of the run. <laughs> of the run. So we get a bunch of points here. I'm gonna put a few into speed and then the rest into attack for Aleph for strength. And Hiroko, we're gonna focus on speed here. So, uh, Hecate didn't do it, but the scariest thing that uh, it can cast is Mudo. Yeah, and if she casts Mudo, then, you know, it's... There's a chance you're dead. <laughs> you're just a bit owned. Just a little bit. Yeah. So pretty much from here on out, we're going to be running from most random encounters. There's a couple yeah. that we might fight later on, but for the most part, they're all going to be... We're going to run away we from all of them. be able to do something here. No. Uh, oh, well. Yeah, I'm just going to escape. There was a certain item I'm looking for, but I don't remember which one it was. There's a strat you can do, uh, but I forgot what item it is. Um, only the world record holder does it, uh, 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 Dominator. He hasn't run this game in five years. I'm, as far as I know, I'm the only Western runner of this game. Uh, and I'd like to give a shout out to Sim, who, uh, you know, helped me get started a couple months back. Uh, gave me some memory locations of where things are, uh, and has been very helpful with uh, this game in general. Uh, I'm poisoned. That's kind of bad, but whatever. All right, I'm just gonna focus Alf on health or er, on strength for a while. Continue going to speed with Hiroko. Gonna have to heal here. First Coast Mundi. There we go. And now Truck Port. So that was Still Disco Makai. Hmm? Still Disco Makai. Yeah. For a while, uh, there will be a point where it stops being Disco. So right now we're on our way to the next boss, which I believe is King Frost, right? No, we're going after Master... We have to fight Master Therion first. Oh, right, right, yeah. Him, then King Frost. Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to make this cycle, um, which is kind of a bummer. It's pretty tight, but oh well. Um, so we're going to have to recycle the moon faces here. Um, so we'll just be walking around for a little bit. You've to, uh, 
you have to fight the next boss at a full moon. Um, so you can make it in time to uh, this next area, uh, the next 3D map, uh, within like six to seven, uh, seven out of eight moon. But sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It depends on how good your movement is. Here's Master Therion. Uh, he can poison you just like Tiamat. But, you know. Again, not too hard, pretty easy boss. to heal poison again. Just post Moondi. And Treport. Still Disco. Changed Makai into a Disco place. Yeah, I, honestly, I feel like it would be a, a much less somber place if it was just a Disco. Like, I agree. I would certainly go chill there. And now we're going to head over to the next area of Makai um, so we can gain access to the Great Church. Oops. But before we go to the Great Church, uh, we want to go and uh, save up here at the terminal uh, for Treport purposes and just to have the terminal. So, uh, overworld map movement isn't like super important yet, but it'll become important later when there are like cutscenes that can happen depending on where you are on the map. So now we're in the great church here, which is currently being, uh, like it's all iced up and stuff because, uh, we've got King Frost, uh, running amok here. Everyone's uh, favorite demons, uh, the, the uh, Jack Rose, you got Jack Frost, all those guys. Well, this is, uh, I believe, the first game King Frost was in. Yeah, Oops. King Frost has set up shop in here, and he's uh, making it a little chilly for everyone. Yeah. 
Wrong season too. It's it's Halloween season. Come on. But I guess if he worked in retail, he would be, you know, perfect timing. And goodbye, uh, King Frost. The next boss, uh, Basilisk, is uh, probably the most RNG fight in the game. Uh, he can just run away from pretty much everything. It's really annoying. He can poison you. It's just not fun. You can lose so much time here. And that's one, one run. Oh, that's, this is really good RNG. And that's Basilisk. Second try Basilisk and no poison. Yeah, uh, yeah. Damn. Really good. It's good. Now we're gonna report. Now to progress the, um, just to, before I talk about that, uh, we're obviously going, since we wrong warped to the last area of the game, we're going through the game, uh, like way out of order. Um, so to progress the plot, we have to go do a couple things here. First of which is we got to use this uh, red cross up here to go talk to Gimmel. Uh, one of like the characters on the box art. We only see him in this uh, cutscene coming up. And the uh, like end game cutscenes. All right, I just need to press B at the next uh, in the next area. Otherwise, the run's over. Um, and uh, we did it. Hardest part of the run right there, actually. I lied when I said the item changing was the hardest part. Remembering <laughs> to press B. I've actually lost runs from remembering uh, to press B there. I wish I was kidding about that too. So now we talk to Gimmel. Uh, in the base, like when you're playing this casually, uh, this, uh, and I guess while I'm playing it now, um, this makes some certain enemies uh, spawn, like man eaters uh, will start to spawn in places now. Now we're heading to the center. Um, usually you'd go here right after doing the Colosseum, but since, you know, we want to go fast, uh, we didn't do that. <laughs> Speaking of man eaters. Yeah, she's dancing furiously. Exactly. This is a really bad encounter, right? I won't be able to reset it until uh, uh, the next moon cycle, which I'll do in center. So here's Zayn, a uh, really important character, but we won't really see him till a bit later. So, a little bit of time save on the elevator. If you press B on uh, the floor you want to go to, you don't have to see the cutscene uh, and hear the like sound effect that plays when you use the elevator. It saves a lot of time later when there's like 60 floor elevators, So, um, but that's way later in the run. Yeah, forgetting that minor detail when you're doing runs can actually lose you a bunch of time. <laughs> It's like, I'd say, five, six seconds over the course of the run, but, you know, 
It's a speed run. Every second counts. Um, so this cutscene takes Hiroko out of our party and replaces Hiroko with Beth. Uh, we're gonna have Beth for like not much time. It's it's really short uh, time spent with Beth because of how out of order we go. There's a funny cutscene later that I'll, I'll I'll talk about that. Now I just have to go to uh, the terminal here. Don't have to do anything in it. I just want to go here to have it to warp to later. There's one more time we have to come back to center. Forgot to tin fume, but hopefully the encounter rate isn't too awful. Shout out to Beetlejuice. That suit. Yeah, he's got a fancy suit, dude. Uh, so here's uh, the first instance of conditional cutscenes. Uh, the earthquake just kind of happens uh, on certain tiles. Not terribly much I can do about that. I'm going to use a tin fume here. Code is six one nine one. Nice. So now we're on our way to factory. Um, we have to go. There's a big beetle juice that is caught. They're doing construction, and it's causing a bunch of earthquakes. And we have to take out a larger form of beetle juice. Um, but you know, we're gonna save that for a bit later. I'm gonna save here. Oh, so we're walking on the bottom uh, section of this map area because we're trying to avoid a cutscene. For some reason, the trigger just isn't there on the lower end of this map. Yeah. So I'm gonna work back to Makai here. Specifically, the first area of Makai we were in that we warped to from Disco. And this is where uh, we won't see uh, disco graphics anymore. So if you were a big fan of disco, I'm, I'm sorry, you know. Yeah, disco is sadly over. Yeah, it's a bummer. Now, if you played this game casually, you'll know that this is like the opposite way you get to Makai. This, you, Normally, you have to set a bunch of uh, like mini statues, or I forget if it's statues or dolls, um, and then you can get to Makai through that Moai head there. So now we're in uh, Shinjuku. Oops.
Some of these uh, maps can be a bit tricky um, just because everything kind of looks the same. That's like a common complaint of the first couple of Megami Tensei games. Now we gotta go uh, get to the Shinjuku uh, terminal and then we have to do a cutscene which will remove Beth from the party. So, at this, for this cutscene, you're supposed to have Hiroko in the party, uh, but we don't. So, uh, and it, like, it doesn't change the text, like, the dialogue still says Hiroko uh, when uh, the female protagonist is talking. Um, so it just removes Beth from the party, just because. Pretty much the same. Yeah, you know. What are you gonna do? Oops. Now we gotta go uh, to drugstore here because uh, this will set up the third wrong warp. If we don't go here, uh, uh, you can't do the wrong warp. His pack won't show up in the his dungeon. Uh, earthquake, you know, random really can't do much about that. Now we gotta go talk to Oberon. Hey, it's Jack Frost. Hey, I know him. He ho. He ho. Now, since Beth decided to uh, flake on us and go somewhere else, we gotta summon Hecate here. And we're gonna use Triport to go back to factory. Save again. Now we got two demons coming up here, or two bosses, uh, like in quick succession. This is technically a boss, uh, Demon Andy. Um, oh, come on. Nice uh, encounter. <laughs> He's right there, too. I know. Boss is right here. All right, so we're going to use this as an opportunity to set up our auto. Uh, one of the options we set in, uh, also that was the boss, uh, at the beginning of the game when we did the frame perfect input uh, was to make uh, attacks we do like in a turn repeatable when we do auto. I'm going to use a tin fume here. Should have used one before I left, but whatever. So now we're gonna make our way to Beetlejuice here. A lot of the fights in this run, um, we pretty much just auto our way through. This run is a whole lot different in Glitchless. There's, the Glitchless run is, I think, five hours long? Oh, uh, it's three hours, 30 minutes. Three hours, like, okay. I must be thinking hours, of a different Like three and a half hours? Um, uh, but in that run, every fight is scary. <laughs> yeah. 
that runs really cool. If you ever have time to watch Mizushima, uh, Mizushima's run of that game, it's really different. Plus, you get to see like the entire game, unlike here where you don't really get to see much of the game. We we kind of just warp around and skip a bunch of stuff. Do tons of stuff out of order. You know. Yeah. So this area uh, later later is going to be much more important. We're going to be uh, doing another wrong warp here. Um, Alright, here's Beetlejuice. That was a boss. <laughs> There's a lot of, like, bosses that you take down very quickly in the early game section. Report. Now we gotta go back to center. and talk to the priest guy on the 21st floor. Cause he's, he's gotta tell us that we have to go back to uh, uh, the Colosseum. Zayn's still here. Uh, he's gonna be there for a while cause we're doing things out of order. This cutscene's really short. He's just like, uh, this dude Dalif, he, uh, he's the anti-messiah. You have to go, uh, take him down. And our main character, who is supposed to be named Alif, also I didn't press B there, oops. Uh, we never get to the point where he gets named Alif, so his name is just Hawk for the rest of the game. Uh, he's like, okay, I'll go take him out. Yeah, we love the law, so we're going to, uh... We're gonna do what the priest says. Mm -hmm. A cool thing about this run in particular, uh, the, like... With all the glitches is, uh, we got the cutscene. That's a bummer. Sometimes you get this cutscene, sometimes you don't. Nothing you can really do about it. Um... This run, like, you barely see any of the story. Like, you skip most of it, so if you're, if you've never played this game before, which I, I implore you to play the first couple of Shin Megami Tensei games, they're really great, they're awesome games. Uh, they get overlooked because of, like, Persona and, uh, like, post-Nocturne and post-Nocturne Shin Megami Tensei. Um, and while they have their, uh, you know, Growing Pains, pretty early uh, Atlas stuff. Uh, they're really fun games. And you don't have to like be spoiled by this run, which is really cool. So here's Dalif. He should be dead, but he really likes getting up after you kill him. And he's still not dead. Yeah, you go wha he whacks you after you uh, beat him, which is a bummer. And uh, Beth just died. Uh, she's supposed to be in your party at this point, but oh well. Press F. Oh well. I'm in tears right now. All right, here's Dalith again. He's actually dead this time. Not not yet, Minnie. Uh, Kuso. Oh later. right, right, right. Yeah, that happens in a second. I was supposed to press B there. That shouldn't matter too much.
It might affect uh, the boss despawn at the end of the game, but if it does, then I'll just... I have another safety safe for that. your Kusa. Thank you. Can we skip this cutscene? No. Okay. What a bummer. What are you gonna do? So we got our second wrong warp coming up here. Um, this is to get uh, Hiroko back. I'm gonna heal here. So we're gonna go back to the area where Beetlejuice was at, um, and then we're gonna uh, report back to the terminal. We're gonna save and reset, and then do a bunch of stuff to set up this wrong work. Unavoidable earthquake. What are you going to do? Save, reset. So RNG is consistent when you save and reset here. So we're going to go figure out when the earthquake uh, cutscene will play in that area, uh, the floor down. I'm going to use Triest here. Gonna do some counting here soon. One. All right, I have to. 
I can't use that then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, so on eleven, uh, after the the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Trieste. Got it. So now we're in the uh, area where Hiroka's locked up instead of the factory. It looks like we're still in the factory, but we're not there anymore. Yeah, similar to the first Rongorf, it for some reason keeps the same uh, texture and music. Yeah. Nice. So there's uh, Zayn. Gonna try us back here. Um, can't report there, it doesn't work. So we have to just walk all the way back. So I'm not mistaken, that cutscene we're still trying to avoid is is still there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna heal here just because you know this run's already invalid, so whatever. Might as well take the time to heal. It saves a little bit of time uh, in some circumstances, and it uh, loses some time elsewhere. All right, we're gonna warp back to Makai here. Uh, the second area of Maka that we went to. And then we're going to save. be going here. Oops. Whoopsie. So now we're gonna go have a chat with our boy Lucifer. Um, now, uh, fun fact, if you 
hold any direction on the D-pad while you're kind of flying to these locations and these cutscenes. It'll actually influence your uh, direction and you can just like hold a direction for forever and you won't get to your uh, uh, destination. It'll just stop your movement. So you'll be moving like back and forth or in a circle for certain things. It's... I don't know why it's they let you do that, but it's something you can do if you really wanted to. And there was Lucifer. We'll see him in like, uh, I don't know, 35 minutes, something like that. It's a quick chat and now we're heading back. Yeah. Now we're heading up to uh, uh, Arcadia to confirm that we're on the law route. Now on the law route. Law confirmed. Yeah. I want to use a ten fume first. This is why we saved so I could use Treport here. And now uh, we're putting Hecate in the comp. Now, a prerequisite of the law route is that you have to awaken Seth, so we're going to do that right here. And now we're going to go fight Astaroth. Now Astaroth can poison you, which is a bit annoying. Hopefully he doesn't do it here. Also, Hiroko doesn't have any of her magic skills anymore. Um, so she's going to learn a ton here. No poison, nice. Yeah, that was pretty good. Again, a lot of magic skills. Now we're heading to Abaddon, which is one of the cooler parts of the game. Uh, a lot of interesting movement here. Uh, there's no door transitions, so um, it's pretty uh, seamless. Yeah, you gotta be on top of your movement here in this area. Abaddon looks a lot different uh, in this game than he does in other uh, Megami Tensei games. So if you haven't ever seen Abaddon in SMT2, you're going to be a bit surprised.
Bonk. Bonk. A lot of warping going on here. Not much to talk about. Just some crisp movement. Yeah, you know, if you're if you're not getting a bunch of encounters like I am, it's the movement's really cool. So the lore is that Abaddon uh, has swallowed Valhalla. That's why we couldn't uh, warp there from the terminal. Do you notice that? Yeah, the the Valhalla uh, 3D music is really good. There's so many good tracks in this game, especially uh, Makai 3D, which gets a better rendition than SMT if. I saw someone mention Belphegor. We don't get to see Belphegor in this run, which is like the worst part. We don't get to see Toilet Demon. Belphegor Real is bummer. great. Yeah, I know. It's, it, we live. It's it, this is the worst timeline. We can't see Belphegor. If only there was a run that let you see Belphegor of this game. Yeah, it's called Glitchless. <laughs> And someone needs to run it. And I don't know if it'll be me. Right, I'm using a tin fume after this. I'm tired of encounters. Hopefully it works. Nope. Delpha Gore percent. Toilet percent. So here's Abaddon. Uh, he can panic you, but it's not too big of a deal. Yeah, there we go. Easy boss. Alright, now we got to get to the next area of Makai, which happens to be the last area of Makai that we'll be going to. This is the most annoying room in the game.
There we go. We did it. We did it. You know, it, it only took like 10 years, but we did it. It was a team effort. Alright, here's the second to last save in the game. We're gonna go to Shinjuku here. We're gonna make our way back to Great Church. Uh, we gotta do some donating. Some very specific donating. Yeah. I screwed up one of the alignment choices, so I hope it still works. It should. If not, I, I do have a safety save somewhere on my computer that I could just load onto the SD to SNES. So that's a, an instance where pressing B on the elevator does save it on the time. Alright, now we're going to go donate to the Messiahs nine times, exactly nine times, so I'm going to be counting. One, two, three, Seven. Eight. And nine. So the reason I'm doing this exactly nine times is to despawn a bunch of bosses right before Autovaca. Uh, so we'll see that soon. Where is Triport? Try us, Triport, there we go. Yeah, and it has to be uh, nine specifically. Uh, if you do eight, it does not work. And if you do ten, it doesn't work. It's fine. We're good. Don't don't worry about it. All 
Alright, we gotta say no to pack here a couple times. He's going to use some statuses on me, but whatever, dude. Put us to sleep. Doesn't matter. We could just do that every time I run this game, just put everyone to sleep. And here's the last wrong warp in the game. That's not summoning Hecate. There we go. I'm gonna use Triest here. Get another pack cutscene, because the way it works is uh, Trias pushes you like uh, into a different square of the map, so this pushes you directly into um, a pack cutscene. But this also puts us at the top floor of center, um, technically. Alright, so we should be good on status. Yeah, alright, that was really good. I've never been that lucky before. All right, three, four, seven, zero. Luck build, baby. Yeah. And now we're back on uh, uh, Arcadia, because we got to get Satan. Yeah, links in this game. <laughs> so we just got Satan. Uh, he's okay. He's not broken. Yeah, all Satan's right, alright. We gotta go in on a full moon or a new moon here. Alright, we're gonna summon Satan. And then Traport. And save. Crossing my fingers that this still works. If not, it's gonna be a big bummer. We got it. All right. We just skipped a nice. bunch of bosses. However, uh, the, the next like real boss we have to fight can still, it's like the last boss that can like kill you, like where you have n no control over it. We should be fine though. So right here, you're supposed to be fight, uh, on the law route. You're supposed to be fighting a ton of bosses, but since we donated nine times, we're not going to be seeing them. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I just had kind of a random question. Are some of the enemies or bosses like recurring throughout the Shin Megami Tensei series? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So all of the bosses are and demons are based off of like real uh, mythological or religious uh, um, entities. Um, okay. Yeah. Oops. Didn't mean to go in there. But... <laughs> cool. And they all play different roles in the stories of each game. It's it's really interesting. Um, it's the only series I know that kind of does this. Also, uh, I think this is kind of obvious now that I, I feel like a lot of people have gone out and said this, but like uh, Shin Megami Tensei and uh, it was like hugely in, uh, influential to games like Pokemon. Like the whole you recruit demons and add them to your party 
Like, it's very similar to Pokemon. It, it, it started like 10 years beforehand. Just maybe the themes are a bit darker. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just, Just a, a bit, bit, you know. This entire place, you're uh, fighting a bunch of uh, Hindi gods, I believe. Is that or Sri Lankan? Don't worry, everyone. Mara is coming. Yeah, Mara soon. Alright, uh... Pray for RNG, boys. So here's, like, the first boss I'm not going to auto. Or technically the second. I'm gonna use Deathbound, Attack, Attack, Defend, and Hopi targets Hecate. Don't use Mudo. Don't do it. Okay. Nice. Alright. Nice. That was a really good fight. Yeah, we want Hecate dead uh, at this fight. Yeah. For something we'll explain later. <laughs> All right, now for the rest of the game, I'm just going to be focusing on uh, speed for Hiroko. Because I'd like for her to have 40 speed by the end of the game. Heading to Mara's Tower here, uh, the second to last dungeon in the game. And this place is a bit tricky on the movement, but should be fine. Yeah, for the most part, this area is pretty simple, but it does have some uh, challenging sections of movement. So there's pitfalls here, so I need to move specifically. All right, there's a uh, Yurim Kala. If you played Nocturne, you know who this guy is. Um, if Hecate didn't die to Atavaka, that's who you'd uh, uh, you'd have to defend with all your party and then attack with Hecate to uh, make sure Hecate's dead before Mara. All right, Mara's coming up right here. Cover your eyes if you are a kid.
Deathbound, uh, and Angel Hair. Where's my Angel Hair? There we go. So your main character always gets paralyzed there. Um, so you have to use a healing item. And that's Mara. Everyone's favorite demon. We all love Mara. Yeah. I mean, what what's not to love? Exactly. Perfect. We got 40 speed on Hiroko, and we're going to get even more after uh, the Lucifer fight. Why didn't you accept the 999,000 Maka from Mara? Dude, I... I... I don't take handouts. I uh, I can't do that. I'm a, I'm a man of uh, a man of God. I, this is law. You're right. You're right. Yeah. And we uh, love the law here. Mara's not. You know, he's not up on the law business, dude. He's up, but not on the law. Uh, certainly. All right. This is uh, Luf Lucifer's palace the last real dungeon of the game. Hopefully I don't get too many encounters. That'd be kind of a bummer. Got some ice here, some sliding tiles. Gonna fall, turn around. And we're gonna climb some stairs. conversation with Lucifer here and then we'll go fight Lucifer see how this fight goes this can either be uh, really like the easiest boss in the game or it can be a bit tricky uh, depending on what skills he uses and I need to get a certain skill after this boss fight uh, to finish the game That's not good. Alright, item. I need an angel hair. Cool. So yeah, that's charm like, is pretty much the worst thing Lucifer can do. <laughs> yeah, if he charms you, like, that's how the fight becomes bad. Oh, dude. This is not going very well, but, you know, what are you gonna do?
This is the worst Lucifer I've had in months. Panic we can deal with, but charm is awful. Nice. All right, there's Lucifer. It got a little scary, but yeah, you know, we made it out. Sometimes my turbo controller also doesn't like to work, so. And we should learn Necros, we got it. Yeah, level 59 on Hiroko is about where you want to be uh, for the final boss, which we're coming up here uh, on Yahweh, just after a couple cutscenes. Turbo is allowed for Super Famicom RPGs, or at least most of them. <laughs> and it's certainly allowed for this game. Did I say Yahweh? I mean, uh, Record Scratch. <laughs> Alright, so now we're on the Megiddo arc. Um, we're blasting off again, if I guess. And now, because we're, we're such good uh, main characters, we're going to go destroy the Earth. Because, you know, why not? We're going to destroy the Earth because we love the law. Oh, uh, true, true. I just want to say, like, the uh, last wrong warp we did uh, skipped most of the game. Uh, we skipped all of Center. We skipped all of uh, Shinjuku. Um, what else did we skip? We skipped a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so here's YHVH's dungeon. Um... When he's, uh, he's talking to you, his name is just Koei, which means voice. And here he is. The big man himself. Alright, so the YHVH fight can be kind of tough sometimes. We're gonna attack, attack, and then we're gonna use Necros, which is the skill we just got on Hecate. We're just gonna bring it back to the party undead. And now we're gonna attack, 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 defend. And auto. And hopefully this fight goes well.
Now, the way I'm measuring how close I am to, uh, like, dying here is by Satan's HP. Uh, if Satan gets to, like, around 200, I'm going to, uh, use another angel hair. But hopefully that doesn't happen. This fight takes about two and a half minutes. Seems pretty good so far. Yeah, if he could just keep on using non-attacking moves that Hecate Hecate absorbs, uh, that'd be really cool. Nice. All right. A little bit more to go. Um, Damn. Yeah, that was a really good fight. That's like the best YHVH I've had in months. I was half expecting something to go wrong, but... Yeah, then... I mean, overall, not much went wrong this run, except for item changing, which, you know, not much you can really do about that. So we got a bunch of cutscenes to go through, but the ex me doing the run portion is pretty much over. I just have to move one screen and mash through some text. So at the end of the fight, our... Uh, I forget exactly when he says it. I, I haven't read YHVH's dialogue in a while, but uh, he curses Satan. Um, so Satan gets kind of owned here. Turns into dust. Rest in peace. He was a good man. Press F, boys. And now we have like 11 minutes of cutscenes. Or, well, we got 10 more minutes of cutscenes. So, I guess we can take some time to talk about uh, Disability Awareness Month. Um, thanks for having me, uh, Tippy, and all of the GDQ people. It's, uh, you know, it's awesome to be able to show off this run. Um, I've dealt with Asperger's my entire life, and uh, speedrunning has definitely helped with me uh, uh, socially. I've always had problems with that, and it's nice to be able to uh, contribute to the community and uh, be a part of it. Uh, gives me more opportunities to be social, and I'm glad it uh, gives a bunch of people more opportunities to, uh, you know, uh, work through whatever they've got. So it's really nice to be able to do this during this month. So yeah, thanks thank for having me. Thank you so me. much for agreeing to, to do the run for us. Um, it's been quite quite the uh, afternoon here. <laughs> yeah, it's this is uh, something else, this one. Uh, there's been some ups and downs with this run, but, you know, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I think you pulled together, and, and uh, it looks like you're going to be quite underestimate, yeah, so you've been putting in a lot of work. Here. Yeah. Sorry for making the estimate too high. Oh, no, no, you're fine. I think it's great when, you know, you're thinking, you submit something, and you and you think, okay, I better prepare for the worst, and then it turns out to be, like, a pretty good run. Yeah. That's always yeah. nice.
Thank you, chat. I hope it means a lot. Yeah, thank you all for being here. And um, thank you again to all of our subscribers for making this hotfix content possible. Um, you guys are helping us out. So thank you so much for that. I guess some do shout outs to the uh, SMT community. Shout outs to uh, uh, Pink Pajamas, uh, Nocturne Runner, really great guy. Go follow Pink Pajamas. Uh, shout outs to Sim for helping me out when I started running this game. Uh, who else? Shout outs to Mini for doing co commentary. Uh, on such short notice, I, I just asked Minnie one day, hey, can you uh, help me out with the hotfix run? And he's like, sure. So thank you, Minnie. Yeah, no problem, man. It's fun. This is actually kind of making me want to uh, play the only Shin Megami Tensei game that I own, which is Digital Devil Saga. Oh, DDS is great. It's a yeah. great game. DDS is good. Yeah. See, it's the only one I've played, and uh, I just remember it being really weird, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're all really weird, but they're really fun. They've got really interesting battle systems, um, and the press turn system in DDS is really uh, refined. Um, it it's impressive how right they got it with Nocturne, and I I'm like the uh, one SMT speedrunner that doesn't really like Nocturne that much, but they <laughs> the battle system is amazing, and it only gets improved as they keep on making more games. Also a reminder to play Rido. Oh yeah, I, I still have to do that. <laughs> so uh, Mini actually routed uh, the uh, first, or the two Rido games, uh, which are uh, action RPGs. So meaning not turn-based? Yeah, they're not oh, turn based. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, to explain this ending sequence, it's supposed to be showing you like all the scenes that you saw, like all the cutscenes you saw while playing through the game, and we saw about like ten percent of these cutscenes. So it makes absolutely no sense if you've never played the game before. <laughs> Shout out to Chris Cater, uh, Kyuyaku Megami Tensei Runner. Um, I want to thank Darko for helping me uh, do the uh, that frame perfect at the beginning of the run. I spent a long time with Darko just uh, doing a bunch of practice with that. So uh, shout out to Darko RTA. Who else helped? Um, <laughs> Obviously, Dominator, uh, back five years ago, made this route. So, if shout out to Dominator on Nico Nico, and has he made a bunch of uh, notes, like has full Japanese notes, but you can just Google translate them if you can't read Japanese, and they translate fine. Uh, eventually I'll get around to uh, making a full tutorial like video series but I've already got a bunch of tutorials on my YouTube channel um, and uh, linked on my Twitch page are a bunch of resources like save states for practice and uh, stuff like that um, some notes like maps uh, skill translation so if you want to run this game uh, feel free to like shoot me a message in either the SMT Discord or uh, on my stream or something. <laughs> More people need to run this game. It's really cool. 
We're almost done with the cutscenes here. Yeah, we're pretty much just getting a highlight reel for uh, stuff we didn't see. Yeah, exactly. And here's the end of the cutscenes. We're about to get to the credits here. It's actually a really cool credit sequence. Um, it's not super flashy, but it, it's it's good looking for what it is. Should it, is it time now? Uh, not yet. Okay, I'm like I'm hovering over the timer. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll let mess you know. it up. <laughs> okay. It's after these credits, it's going to uh, show the goddess is going to come down and uh, turn into a statue. And once that screen fades to black, it's time. Okay. Got it. Yeah, the credits theme is actually the game over music. Is it actually? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. They ex they expect you won't hear it because you won't game over that much. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, about like 30 more seconds, but definitely get ready on time. All right. time nice do you want me to tell you what it was yeah sure i mean the run's invalid but all right it was a two hours two minutes and 18 seconds okay pretty good if you ask me not terrible <laughs> well thank you so very much electra for running this uh for disability month it really means a lot and uh, i hope everybody enjoyed the run and uh thanks many for helping him commentate that was that was a good uh speed run <laughs> do you have any uh any last uh words that you'd like to leave our viewers with uh thanks for having me uh i guess i, I think i've said everything uh, yeah yeah <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, uh, everybody, for watching. That is going to do it for today's hot fix. But be sure to tune in to the community spotlight that will be at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow for Tales of Zillia by Transkina. So we will see you then and take care of yourselves. Bye for now.